there is something very interesting going on with these three equations. Notice that they are all equal to negative 1, but let me tell you, the graphs for these functions, they do not cross negative 1 at all. For example, the first one, if we take a look at x squared, which is our girlfriend parabola, looks like this. Negative 1 is somewhere down below here. You see, they don't cross each other. So that means it has no solution, huh? Likewise, for the next one, well, square root of x looks like this. It's just like the sideway parabola, but it's just the top portion of it. And for negative 1, once again, it's down below here. So again, this does not cross that. So it seems like there's no solution for this, huh? And now for the last one, absolute value of x, which looks like a v. I like the absolute value of x a lot. You can do this every, like, every time. You have a v. And again, negative 1 is somewhere down here. Ah, so because the graph do not cross the negative 1, so that means they have no solutions? Well, technically, yes, if you're just talking about the real numbers. But for the first one, we can actually continue. Let me show you. Start with x squared equal to negative 1. We want to get rid of the squared, and we can do so by taking the square root both sides. And don't forget the plus or minus right here. This and that cancel, we just get x is equal to plus or minus. Square root of negative 1 is defined to be i, the imaginary unit. And then we're done. So we can actually have the imaginary solution or the complex solution for this. Side note, i is defined to be i squared that will give you negative 1. And also, if you have negative i, if you square that, negative squared is positive, but i squared is negative 1. So this and that are the solutions for that equation. But for the second one, check this out. If you attempt to solve square root of x is equal to negative 1, how do we get rid of the square root? Square both sides, right? OK, let's square both sides. It looks okay, huh? Because this and that cancel, and then we just get x equals negative 1 squared, negative 1 times negative 1, so we should just get 1. But let me tell you, this right here, it's not the answer. This right here, it's an extraneous solution, meaning it's like a fake answer, meaning it doesn't work. Let's try it. If we plug in 1 into the original equation, we get square root of 1, but if you just look at square root of 1, that's just equal to 1. We are trying to get to negative 1, so not equal. That's why this equation, in fact, it has no solution. Not even in the complex world. And you might be wondering, can we put the i into the square root? Yes. Square root of i, this right here is doable, but let me tell you, this right here is not equal to negative 1. i squared is equal to negative 1. Square root of i, well, see my other video. Yeah, you can see how to work that out. Now, for the last one, absolute value of x. This is similar to the second case. And how do you even start with that solving absolute value of x is equal to negative 1? Well, you, you can't. You have to think about the definition. The absolute value of x, uh, it represents the distance from x to 0. If you are talking about the distance, you can never have negative distance. So whenever we have absolute value, if the output is equal to a negative number, this right here also has no solution, right? It's not possible. Well, one thing I would like to show you though. Note, absolute value of x can also be looked at it as square root of x squared. When you cancel the square root and also the square, you technically end up with absolute value of x. And another note I want to tell you is, Square root of anything inside, right? If the output is equal to a negative number, 
this equation has no solution at all, not even in the complex world, right? So this applies to this. Earlier, you can also argue that this is equal to that. Square root of anything cannot give you a negative result. Yes, no solution. How about i though? Can we really use i? No. If you put i inside of the absolute value, let me tell you, this right here is equal to 1. Because remember, absolute value tells you the distance between this number to the origin. So if you look at the picture real quick on the complex plane, this is the real axis, this is the imaginary axis. i is somewhere here, and the distance is indeed equal to 1. So the absolute value of i is equal to 1. So i only works for the first equation when you have the second power, not the other two cases.